Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to a Endless Runner tutorial. So in this one, we fix a bug with the uh, when, whenever you enter collision with an object and you die. We fix a bug where the collision detection was a little bit odd and sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't, and sometimes it would even trigger with walls. And then after that, we had a little bit of polishing by adding... Um, we, well, first we changed the skybox color and then we add a point light to our player and we remove the directional light so it gives this kind of result which is really neat. Alright guys, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we have a few bugs to fix. So the first one being the way we detect collision. So as you can tell right now, I've just entered collision with this thing but uh, I think it's on this prefab, yep. As you can tell, and right there. I've entered collision, but I didn't die, and the reason is, you see how our capsule collider is, um, it's not a square, so basically it has these rounded sides, and what happens over here is that I didn't hit the thing right in front of me, I hit it about there on the collider, so a little bit like this. And what happens is, at the moment of calculation, the point of impact is about there. But um, we only say it's deaf if it's beyond that point towards the left, but we've hit approximately here. Now, what we used to say is we take the position of the player, which is in the center down here, and we increment this position by the radius, which would give us exactly this point. Let's actually reduce that. Let's actually reduce that by not even adding the control at radius, so that was an error on my part. Now, um, we are not going to add the radius, so we're going to be in the center, but let's give ourselves a small buffer of, say, about here, so 0 0.1. This way, when we're on the wall like this, we don't actually die, we don't actually call the def function. So um, this is going to take like a second, so we're going to open up the player motor script, and inside of here, at one point we say um, controller dot radius over here. That's in the on controller collider. It now we're not going to add controller radius. Instead, we're going to add 0.1f. Let's actually try this out. I haven't tested it before, but in theory it should work. So we're going to make sure that we don't die if we just hit the wall. Oh, or the floor. That'd be a good thing too. Okay, so we actually die with when we uh, hit the floor, so that's a bad thing. We also die when we hit the walls, so maybe a little bit more is going to be required. Um, we are going to need to increment this by, say, maybe 25. What I'm thinking about doing is actually saying controller.radius, but dividing that by 2. This way we have half of the radius, that's 0.25. And okay, right now this this looks like it's working. We don't get um, we don't get any errors from colliding with walls, as you can tell, and not with the floor either. But when we hit something in front of us, then it does work. So we could leave it like that. But what I feel like doing, because I'm I'm not sure like if your prefab are going to end all this or not, is we're going to do a additional step on this, another way to actually test a collision. And you don't have to do this if it's working fine for you, but. I will just do it to make sure everybody is on the same page. We are going to find your prefab over here, so any prefab really, and let's put it inside of here. So you see how um, this object might be a def condition, this object and this object, all of these three objects, uh, not this one, this one doesn't have a collider, so that's my bad for this, well these two objects. They have uh, what we call colliders, you see the green boxes, and that's what enters collision with us and then we die. So every single one of these that have the collision, we could tag them as enemy. So the way you do this is really simple, you only take the object, you don't take the whole bridge, you don't take the whole um, cargo plank in this case, you only take the one object that you can enter collision with and you go under tag, Let's do add tag. We are going to add a um, enemy tag, if you wish. Now select that barrel once more. Only that barrel, nothing else. Select that barrel and then put the enemy tag. You are going to do this for every single object that can kill you in your scene. 
So this object, and make sure you don't select more than one object at the time. You don't select the parent of that object, you don't select anything else. Once you're done with this, you are going to select your, your prefab object and then hit apply. So now every instance of that prefab is going to have barrels and like cargo that um, have the enemy tag on it. Now I'm ready to delete this one. I only have one other object that has this and here it is. So um, I don't want my player dying when he hits that. In fact, I don't even want that. So I remove this. What else? Um, this box, this box, and this box are all things that could kill him. So I will go ahead and just put the enemy tag on this, on this, and on this as well. Now I could be putting it on the plank below, but I think it's a little bit too low for that. So maybe even lower it to the, to the ground, like so. And it wouldn't, uh, my player wouldn't die if he just hits that. And maybe even remove this one because it doesn't even have a collider. So this is my new prefab right here. All the objects that can kill my player have been tagged as enemy. Right. So I'm going to save this and hit apply. Okay, so now what happens to our code? We could, if you just did what I did right now, you could wipe all of this. You don't even need this anymore. And you could say um, hit dot tag or do we get tag? No, we don't. Okay, hit that game object dot tag is equal equal to enemy. If that's the case, then we can go ahead and just uh, do the def function. Let's try it. So since I've hit applied on all my prefab, if I take a look, this object should have enemy tag right there, and it does. And this one as well. Let's hit play. Now I'm never ever gonna die if I just enter collision with the wall for some odd reason it had a uh, wrong calculation. That won't happen ever. However, if I hit something that has the enemy tag on it, like this, it will die no matter what. And that goes for the sides as well, like this. You see how I enter collision um, after passing that object? That is because we don't have anything that checks, okay, is that control point? Um, beyond a certain extent. In fact, if you find this really annoying, what you could do is actually leave both conditions in there. So I'm just going to hit Control Z until I find my condition back. Okay, so if we enter collision with this and say oh, we're just going to say um, transform the position dot 0.1f like the first time we've did, and then we do end the end statement like that hit that game object that tag is equal to enemy if those conditions are met if both of them are met then we go ahead and we just do the dev function okay so we've pretty much fixed that bug and what I'd like to do from now on is just um, polish the game a little bit just add some more stuff to it so it doesn't look too bad the first step I will take towards achieving that goal is changing the skybox color once more <laughs> So um, I think I have a black skybox, a skybox that has pretty much nothing on it. So I'll just be putting that on. And here it is. So that's my new skybox right now. If I play, that's what we get. It's a little bit better, but I can still see the very end over there. And that annoys me as a game developer, I guess. You could call this a artifact because it pops in the screen. So a way that I thought about uh, fixing this issue now, of course, you might not even have this issue, but I'm just going to share what I have did on my end, is I'm going to turn off the directional light. So right now, we're in the complete dock. There's a small light on my player, but I think that's cool, actually. Now, of course, um, once we get to a certain speed, it's going to be impossible to play this game because it's going to be so fast that you can barely move once you see the object. So let me just try real quick to uh, land a high score using this. You need to have some quick reflexes, especially if you're playing on a small screen, say you're playing on your mobile device, then um, we might actually have to increase the range at which we can see, and it's actually not too bad for some reason. Or maybe I've just played the game too much, that's another thing that might happen. So uh, we're going to go back inside of the engine in a little bit once I die. We're going to go back inside of the engine and we're going to increment the uh, range of that light. And by the way, 
since we don't see uh, past a certain extent, you can also use this to lower the amount of active tiles on the, on the, on the screen. So that might be something you are, um, that you might do to improve your game performance over time, because we don't even see seven tiles ahead, so we don't even need that much in the end. And uh, let's go ahead and just take the light. Uh, by the way, uh, mine came with a light, but if you need a light on your, on your player, go under player, right click, do a new light, and a point light would do the job. So here it is. Then using that point light, you can, um, I'm just going to drag a prefab right here so we can actually have a look. Here's one. Okay, so using that light, I'm going to use the one I already had. Um, I can simply just test this out by increasing the intensity, but most of all, the range. That's what we're really interested in. And maybe reduce the intensity a little bit now that we've got the range. So here we go, like so. Range of 50. Now let's see what this gives us in the game. This gives us... Um, that was not an artifact. This was actually because I already had a prefab spawn and it spawned another prefab on top of it. So if we go back and do our game scene and we remove that, we should have a really nice looking game now. And here we go. This was our Endless Runner and it's pretty much over. Actually, it's not over. We're going to have one more episode where we actually um, create some controls for the Android and we push this on our phone and we just play it on the phone. Hi right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked this video or if you learned something, please leave me a like. Really appreciate that. If you have any comment or question, you can always leave them in the comment section below and I'll make sure to answer them as soon as possible. Other than that, please subscribe for more tutorials like these and I will see you in the next episode.